welcome back. And we're moving into our first segment for today. And uh, we have joining us on set freelance expressive artist, art facilitator, sorry, that is Leroy Green. Uh, and today we're talking about how to teach young children patriotism. Good morning and welcome. Good morning and thank you for having me here. Well, I wanted to say retired art teacher, but it seems that you're freelancing at this point, and so we're so grateful that you're going to be sharing your expertise with us as well, right? Okay. Yeah, up until the end of last month, I was actually the curriculum officer for Expressive Arts mm -hmm. at the Ministry of Education, but the contract ended last week, yeah. and to be totally honest, I don't want to be working for anyone at this point in time. That's fine. You get and to share your expertise with even more people now. And I've already yeah. done two workshops at two yeah. different schools. And for those listening out there, I know I've had some requests to teach children. I don't want to do that either. I'm going to focus on teachers. So you teach teachers how, how to, to teach, teach children. And that's, that's what you had been doing over the course years. of the years. Now, Leroy, tell us uh, about the... How do you strategize on putting together a lesson, whether you're a parent or a teacher, on delivering a particular message specifically to young children? All right, let's say that, uh, well, first of all, the arts mm -hmm. as a whole, because when I say the arts, we actually mean drama, dance, music, art, and sometimes creative writing. Mm -hmm. But on a whole, it's a medium of expression. Mm -hmm. And it is also closely tied to culture yeah. because the arts is what is used to preserve and promote the, our culture, whatever country you come from. Mm -hmm. And it started from the days of the cavemen when there were drawings and hieroglyphics inside mm -hmm. the, the cave telling the story. And now, if you're going to teach, let's say a drama lesson, because mm -hmm. that's really my forte. Yeah. All right. And you want to deal with the theme of patriotism. I always tell teachers that we're living in a world of technology. We're living in a world where the children are very visual, mm -hmm. very active, and that sort of thing. No longer will the chalk and talk technique work with the children of today. So normally when, I, I, when I'm planning a lesson with my, with my teachers, I still call them my teachers, mm -hmm. I would tell them, try and incorporate it. So if I'm going to teach a lesson on patriotism, specifically for Belize, mm -hmm. I would begin a lesson in a very creative manner by Sele carefully selecting and playing one, two, or three small pieces of Belizean music. Mm -hmm. And then moving from there, we'll have the children listen to it very carefully, have a discussion afterwards, and uh, identify what the theme of those selections were. Yeah. And more likely than not, they would come up with patriotism, love of country, something like that. Because mm -hmm. one of my favorite songs I like to use in lessons is... Um, Homeland by the Sea, because okay. that really brings out that patriotism yeah. thing. So that would be the introduction of the lesson, because the lesson really has three parts. It has introduction, it has p procedure, it has conclusion, and it has evaluation. Because yeah. after every lesson, we must evaluate. Yeah. Right? The procedure would be, okay, after they have identified that, I would use a Belizean poem. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, I'm a writer, so most of the time, the poems that I wrote, that I use were written by myself. Yeah read the poem to them, get them to listen, and then from their memory, come up with what was the content of the poem. Mm -hmm. If they're middle to upper children, then they could have their own hand notes with the poem on it, mm -hmm. where they would go through it verse by verse by verse and select parts which poignantly bring out that theme of mm -hmm. patriotism. So in that list, you had the development of listening skills, observation skills, reading skills, analytical skills. In the, and then the conclusion would be where I would, I don't like lessons which end with asking a series of questions. Mm -hmm. I like lessons where children apply what they learned in a creative manner. So my conclusion more likely than, than not would be having the children either draw something mm -hmm to prove that they understand patriotism yeah. or come up with a little paragraph or something mm -hmm. which shows that they understand patriotism. So you would have in that lesson, you would have a bit of art in it too. Yeah. So because 
we all believe we all know that the arts are not separate mm -hmm. there's no line dividing drama dance music and art and so on mm -hmm. and of course after that well then you evaluate the lesson to see the strong points the weak points and how you would reinforce the weak points so mm -hmm. in a nutshell that's, that's how you would do it now i think when and that's specifically for drama for drama because dance has its own and you know, I think one of the things that we often see around this time, we know that the school rally is coming up, um, the, the teachers do spend some time trying to pass on this message of love of country to young children. And oftentimes it means pulling from social studies classes and national symbols and uh, things of that and understanding the flag. Um, what do you think are some of the ways that you've learned in your experience uh, really resonate with children? That they'll take away the message beyond memorizing the national on, animals. The hands-on thing. Yeah. Because even in social studies, yes, you're teaching social studies concept, mm -hmm. but again, I would have them concluding that lesson doing something artistic. Mm -hmm. So whether it's dealing with the flag, the national symbols or what, the conclusion would be something that they would apply the skills, the techniques, the concepts that they learned in that mm -hmm. lesson in an artistic manner. So if the lesson, the social studies lesson was based on understanding of flag, probably at the end of it, if there were small children, there's something that I always encourage the children to do, make a diagram of the flag yeah. but not simple drawing okay i would give them a uh, red white and blue paper mm -hmm. and they would tear it up cross it crumple it and make the flag out of those bits of crumpled paper okay. so because young children at that age they need to actually uh, develop their find the muscles so yeah. that would be a chance to even for some physical development mm -hmm. in that lesson okay right. and we said that we spoke a bit about drama and you use the example of reviewing patriotic poems what about uh the skits that we usually see how do you get young children to be involved at that level well uh what teachers need to realize is that to get children to perform a skit and give it meaning. Yeah. Don't just give them it on a piece of paper and say memorize it. Yeah. First of all, when you're teaching a skit, you got to teach it like a language arts lesson. Mm -hmm. all right. So maybe you can do it in a language arts lesson where you tie in the language arts with the art lesson. But the first thing to do is teaching as a, it is a language arts lesson mm -hmm. where you get them to identify the theme, the characters, the setting, the ambience mm -hmm. and how all of these interact to bring out the theme that's a language arts lesson mm -hmm. after they have completely understood what that skill is all about that's when you transfer it now to the drama lesson mm -hmm. where now they you have you hold your uh or it won't come to me but like what you like would, a competition uh what you know what you guys hold here before you have your show it begins with A, I just can't, it's slipping. An audition. Audition, okay. yes. Okay. You hold your audition to see who is the best person mm -hmm. to do which part, to play which yeah. character. And after you've done that, you review it again to make sure that they understand. Yeah. You decide on costumes, you decide on uh, props and that kind of thing. You make it a class activity. Yeah. And that is where the art can come in because for a backdrop and so on, the children can make that themselves. Yeah. Props can be made from simple things like, for example, if you want a vase, you can take the crystal water bottle mm -hmm. and you can paint it red, white and mm -hmm. blue and write Belize on it or something like that. You can get the toilet paper. There's a way of plaiting toilet paper, mm -hmm. putting a bit of wine in the middle and mm. taking your time to open it mm -hmm. and it becomes something like a rose oh nice and then you just take if you want to keep that theme of patriotism you can always take the paintbrush mm -hmm. and just lightly paint the edge mm -hmm. of the flowers so you're combining the arts again you can also include a bit of dance in that skit yeah all right and the dance, of course, would be centered around patriotism. I mm -hmm. always tell teachers, don't just select any kind of music yeah. to put it in a skit. It has to tie in and has meaning. And of course, because we find a lot of times when we are preparing these things, all the children in the classroom 
want to take part. Of course. Not all of them, and I'm mm -hmm. being very real here, mm -hmm. can act. Mm -hmm. Not all of them can dance. Right? So if some can sing, let them sing a bit of song because there is nothing like integrating it. Those who can't do either of that, you don't abandon them. That's the artist where you get them to paint the background and make the props and so on. Mm -hmm. so it becomes a complete art project and all the children feel useful because they're involved in what's going on. Right? Okay. So, and I always tell teachers, integrating the arts, like for example, turns a poem mm -hmm. from an item into a performance. Now, you know, I went, when, you, uh, when you mentioned dance, one of the things came to mind that I believe we've discussed before when it comes to the Festival of Arts, that we have a very um, predetermined, I think people kind of feel that Belizean dance means big skirts or punta. No. Um, how do you, yeah, and, and, and that's what I wanted to explore further. If you no. want to introduce or allow for true creative expression from the children to express because patriotism. I, How do you do that? I'm glad you asked that question because a lot of times Belizeans do believe that if you're not wiggling up your waist or something, you're not dancing. And if it's not the punta or so on. There's like my favorite song again, Homeland by the Sea. Yeah. There's no way you can punta to that. Yeah. Right? And what the public needs to realize is that a dance has to tell a story mm -hmm. because the teachers have to write a synopsis of the dance first of all mm -hmm. and send it in with their entry to the festival around so that when we look at that dance we can know what story it mm -hmm. is illustrating so um, arms limbs and bodies and that song i can see the song homeland by the sea being danced is what we call a creative classical dance mm -hmm. because in belize there's no real real classical dance when it comes to ballet mm -hmm. because ballet is being is done on your toe points yeah. for the whole time yeah. that is not done in Belize but we have dances which I use a lot of the techniques and elements from the ballet and mm -hmm. we call it creative classical where the movements are graceful and so on mm -hmm. so a dance like that can be even more effective than having them just dance the punta or not the punta I'm sorry about that the yeah. punta rock yeah. Because there's a difference between the punta and the punta. And the punta That's rock. true. That's so true. I have to say the punta because the punta rock because the punta is really a cultural dance. Yes. And you can't yes. change that at all. Yes. Right? Because that's another thing too that we see happening in the festival. Teachers might send in an entry saying um uh folk and traditional dance. Mm -hmm. But then when the music comes on it is sweet pain or somebody like that. And I love their music and yeah. so on, but it's not, that is not, it's not traditional. Uh, traditional yeah. That is what, what you call creative modern dance. Yeah. Right, so. Now, what are some of the other creative ideas that you think uh, perhaps are underutilized in being able to deliver this specific message? Things in the environment. Hmm. Because you can easily, if you notice, there are a lot of stones about. Mm -hmm. Flat stones, especially those ones that you find in the riverbed in Cayo and so on. Yeah. Those can easily be painted. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe with a white background, the flag, and maybe painting in small letters. I love Belize. Mm -hmm. It becomes paperweights. Yeah. Right? You have things like the coconut palm, mm -hmm. where you can make mats, Belize in mats. Mm -hmm. And these are things that I'm just trying to take yeah. out of my head. You have uh, like teachers who are especially creative. They can also write their own songs and they can put it to the tune of a song that the children already know. Yeah. Or they can also, or they can even, if they are really musicians, come up with their own tune for the mm -hmm. song. We, when, I go, when I used to go about, I used to teach teachers how to the format of scripts mm -hmm. and encourage them to write their own thing mm -hmm. and uh, what we encourage teachers to do is not to try and just be general in your patriotism yeah. if you come from Cayo deal with something that the children up there know if you are from Ponta Gorda and your children are largely Mayan nothing is wrong with having your script done in Mayan yeah I remember one year a little boy came into the festival of arts he was five 
and I think he was the son of an ambassador, mm -hmm. and he spoke only Spanish. Mm -hmm. But the teacher came and said he, he talks only Spanish, and I said to the teacher, I don't talk Spanish. Right? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the story, the little boy, I went to the teacher and I said, he was telling a story about his chicken that was lost and he was all over the place looking for his chicken until he gradually found his chicken. Uh -huh. And he said, but I thought you don't understand Spanish. Uh -huh. I said, no, but the way the little boy used his face and yeah. his hands. The expressions. And just the expression yeah. told me what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. And then he had a live chicken on the stage of course it was tied up right so right away i connected the yeah. two and i knew what it was so the arts depends a lot on vocal expression facial expression body expression when i say the arts i mean all of them except art mm -hmm. because even dance your face plays mm -hmm. a vital role because if you're dancing a happy song how will your face look down in the dumps yeah if you're dancing, a expression. you're dancing a liturgical song, which is a song of praise, well, that's when your face looks serious. Mm -hmm. If you're dancing a song about death or some theme like that, yeah. you can't be smiling. Yeah. And one of the things that I hear people saying is, uh, make sure you make eye contact with the audience. Mm -hmm. That is wrong to tell, to tell our performance. Mm -hmm. the, thing to, the trick about performing on the stage is to look above the audience's head and they're going to feel like, you're looking, looking right at, at them. Because yep. by staring them in the face, you can easily get distracted. Because that right now, I'm looking, I'm looking over your head. Yes. But it looks like I'm looking directly <laughs> in your face. Right? I tell people this trick all yes. the time and because it does help. It does. Yeah. And recently, I was working with one of the candidates from Queen of the Bay. Mm -hmm. She's actually the Queen of the West. And she called me like last minute and said that, they said that the costume and everything that she wore for the talent must be uh, patriotic. Mm -hmm. Well, I said to her, at this point in time, your pageant is Saturday, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And they're going to tell you that Thursday, when mm -hmm. I've already done the costume for you, the costume is yellow gold and black. I said, but I'm going to send the description of it because patriotism does not have to be expressed in white, red, and, white, red and blue. And so I wrote it for her that the black that was on the costume and it didn't have a Maya motive. Mm -hmm. So it said, I said to her, it has a multiplicity of meanings because the ribbon around it had the Maya motive, mm -hmm. which uh, reminds us of our ancestry. Yeah. I said the black is also the rich black earth that is very fertile here in Belize that almost anything that we throw uh -huh. grows. The rich <laughs> yellow gold, that's our tropical sunshine. Yeah. It's also the wealth of a... Uh, the riches that Belize has, mm -hmm. I said, there was a little headpiece with some feathers. I said, that reminds us of the Arawaks, who were really the people who lived here, who were the first Indians. I said, so it is patriotic, even though it is not in red, white, and blue. That's true. Because as when you do art, yeah. you've got to think what they like to call out of the box. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the reasons that artists do not like to be restricted. Yeah. I know when you ask me to write something, I really don't like people telling me to. I want you to do it this way. Yeah. The minute you tell me that, I'm going to say to you, okay, do it yourself. Yeah. You want creative mm -hmm. control. Now, let's, let's shift the, the, the topic to things parents can do. Because the teachers, we know, are going to spend some time mm -hmm. trying to undertake these activities. But September comes around and we all just get this feeling of pride and happiness and we're ready to celebrate. Mm -hmm. We look forward to carnival and the parades. But how do you make sure the little ones are learning the lesson beyond? I, okay, I think the parents can do... Uh, when children are young, they like stories. Yeah. Indeed, that's one of the techniques that I use a lot in preschools. So the parents can do that, tell stories, tell the children a lot of stories about Belize, about the Logwood camps, about the Battle of St. George's Key, things that have meaning to our history and our culture. Mm -hmm. They can even make it up themselves. Yeah. Because for, for small children, you don't need a long story. Mm -hmm. That story can be six or eight lines. Yep. Just make sure it includes that and you keep telling them about loving your country and different ways so you can love your country. You can even give them little pieces of paper for them to scribble on how they can show love of country. Yeah. You can give them the colors, red, white and blue, and let them do finger painting so that they get used 
to seeing the national colors. And so there's yeah. a lot that parents can do. They can play the national songs, and there's a lot of them. I was trying to get hold of some of them because they are a lot of them. Oh, yes. And, but now we hardly know where to find them. Mm -hmm. So if you could find them, play it for the children, and not only during this season. Because that's one of the things that I watch. It's mm -hmm. only in September that Belize then seems to be aware about raising your flag and blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, blah. Raising your flag should be all year round mm -hmm. because it's an important part of our identity. Our identity does not exist only in September. Yeah. Right? And you mentioned that part about carnival. Mm -hmm. The story that I wrote for my carnival band this year brings out patriotism, but by focusing on the cuisine. Mm. Our theme is uh, gumption, kung soup, and Belizean delicacy. Right? But the story that I wrote about it is set way back in the days of the Lagwood camps. Mm -hmm. right? so, so it's still, I mean, it's still at showcasing portions of our culture without, uh, I, I appreciate what you're saying. We tend to always just think red, white, and blue mm -hmm. and the flag around this time of year, but there's so many other stories So many that other we can ways you to can celebrate. use, exactly. And what about marching? I mean, I remember as a kid, one of my favorite things to do is we used to march around with our flags. To tell you the truth, when I was in school, uh -huh. we used to march through what's now the House of Culture. Mm -hmm. And the governor used to stand there and wave and mm -hmm. whatnot. Uh, when I got into my old teens, early 20s, I realized, and please, people out there, this is my opinion, I believe that that made no sense. <laughs> I didn't really see that as showing patriotism, mm -hmm. to be marching around waving a flag. Mm -hmm. and by the next day, you forget it and just to see somebody waving at you on the mm -hmm. I don't think that's patriotism. I think patriotism comes from within. Mm -hmm. It depends on how you th treat your environment, how you treat your people, mm -hmm. how you promote your country, because yeah. I believe that whatever way, whether we promote our tourism, whether we promote our food, our culture, and we do it with a passion, that is expressing patriotism, not marching and waving a flag. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the reasons I never take part in any kind of marches except But my you carni do do your carnival. Yes, Everybody because knows that I you. do carnival yeah. because to tell you the truth, I'm someone who hardly goes out. Yeah. And that is one of my means of enjoyment. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and you know, people look forward to it. So, I, you know, we appreciate you stopping in and sharing some of these tips. Uh, uh, one of the things we do want to ensure is that the younger Belizeans coming up will have the love and appreciation uh, that they should have for their for country. country. And it starts from teaching them at exactly. a very young age. Exactly. So and thank you for coming in. And it's something that I think we really need to focus on because mm -hmm. some observation over the years, we're fast losing it. Yeah. Even our, our folklore. You know, a lot of the children don't yeah, know who Yeah, because sometimes when you talk about Anansi and Tatado Hende and so on, they don't know what you're mm -hmm. talking about, right? And, but I think because we're becoming too Americanized, mm -hmm. we tend to imitate and we believe that what is out there is better than what we have. And no way is it better than what we have because yeah. without our identity, we are not a people. And patriotism is the core of our identity. All right. So thank you once again, Leroy. Thank you also. We're going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we are going to have our KTV The Remix recap as we prepare for tonight's grand finale. So stay tuned.